All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of three minus eight is equal to zero. So how most people solve this equation is they add eight on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to eight. And then they take the cube root on both sides. So the cube root of x to the power of three is x and the cube root of eight is two. So then they get x equals two, which is a solution to this equation but actually there are more than one solution to this equation. So I'm gonna rewrite my equation here, x to the power of three minus eight equals zero. And now I'm gonna rewrite eight as two to the power of three. So I get x to the power of three minus two to the power of three is equal to zero. And then now I'm gonna use the formula a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So in this case, this turned into x minus two times x squared plus two x plus four is equal to zero. So now I get two equations. I get x minus two equals zero and x squared plus two x plus four equals zero. So for x minus two equals zero, I get x equals two, which was a solution that we already got. But now see on top of this, we have a whole nother equation with two more solutions because it's a quadratic equation. So to solve this, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. So I get negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared, which is four minus four times a, which is one times c, which is four, or all over two a, so two times one. And this turns into negative two plus or minus the square root of four minus 16 over two, which is equal to negative two plus or minus negative 12 over two which is equal to negative two plus or minus 12 i over two, which is equal to negative one plus or minus six i. So these are the two more solutions to this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have eight to the power of x plus two to the power of x is equal to 68. So I'm gonna first start by rewriting eight as two to the power of three. So I get two to the power of three to the power of x plus two to the power of x is equal to 68. Now I'm going to rewrite two to the power of three to the power of x as two to the power of x to the power of three. So I have this plus two to the power of x is equal to 68. And I can do this because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. Now from here, I'm going to let two to the power of x equal to the variable y. So if I substitute in y for two to the power of x, I get y to the power of three plus y is equal to 68. Now I can subtract 68 on both sides. So I get y to the power of three plus y minus 68 is equal to zero. Now, to actually factor this and find the value of y, I need to first find the factors of 68. So the factors of 68 are 1, 2, 4, 34, and 68. So, Now, one wouldn't work because one times 68, we can't subtract those two to get y. And two wouldn't work either. The only one that would work is four because if you divide y minus four, with y to the power of three plus y minus 68, that would be a factor, that would be factorable. So now that we know that four is a proper factor, for my original equation here, y to the power of three, I'm gonna rewrite this as y to the power of three minus four y squared plus four y squared minus 16 y, which is the, which is four squared plus 17 y because negative 16y plus 17y is equal to y, 
and finally minus 68 at the end is equal to zero. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. So these two are a group, these two are a group, and these two are a group. From y to the power of 3 minus 4y squared, I'm going to factor out y squared because that's the greatest common factor. So I get y squared times y minus 4 plus from 4y squared minus 16y, I'm going to factor out 4y. So I get 4y times y minus 4. And from 17y minus 68, I'm going to factor out 17. So I get 17 times y minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, if I factor out y minus 4, I get y minus 4 times y squared plus 4y plus 17 is equal to 0. And now, this, is, this gives me two equations. I get y minus 4 is equal to 0, and I get y squared plus 4y plus 17 is equal to 0. So for y minus 4 equals 0, add 4 on both sides, and I get y equals 4. For y squared plus 4y plus 17 equals 0. I can factor this by using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is 4, and c is 17. So I get y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 1 times 17, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. This is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 68 over 2, which is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 50, negative 52 over 2. And this is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 52 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. And the square root of 52, this can be simplified to, well, 52, that's 20, that's 13 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2, so this can be 2 root 13. So I get y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 13 times the square root of negative 1, which is simply equal to i over 2. Now, if I divide both terms by 2, I get y equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 13i. Or sorry, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 13i. So, now that we know these values of i, y, remember how we let 2 to the power of x equal to y. Meaning, I get 2 to the power of x equals 4, and this is obvious, x equals 2. So that's one solution of x. And I also get 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2 plus the square root of 13i. And 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2 minus the square root of 13i. Well, 2 to the power of x, we can't, take, we can't take the power of a positive number and make it equal a negative number. So there's no solutions for these two. And x equals 2 is my only solution to this problem.